Welcome to the service of Word for Healing. I invite you to join in the responses that will be printed on your screen. We gather this night in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. They cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them, and saved them from the grave. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and loving in all his works. The Lord upholds all who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and ministers to them in their illness. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. God has made us his people through baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts, the second chapter. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this evening is Psalm 6. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord, how long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Among the dead, no one proclaims your name. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from my groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be overwhelmed with shame and anguish. They will turn back and suddenly be put to shame. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way as a thief and a bandit, the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. 
He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep will follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, tonight we begin a series looking at the Psalms, in particular the Psalms for healing. Now, the Psalms are a collection of poems and prayers and songs. In fact, in Hebrew, the title means songs of praise. And there are many different kinds of Psalms. So during our evenings together, we're going to start with the Psalms that are penitential. Seven psalms grouped together because the early Christians noted the themes of penitence. Now remember in the Old Testament, they believed that God punished them as a way of correcting and teaching them. Illness and calamities were seen as judgments from God. And so we begin our psalm. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord, how long? Right now, many of us are crying out, How long, Lord, how long? We are crying out of loneliness. We are crying in isolation, in fear. How long, Lord, how long, we ask. But the psalmist also points us in the right direction. Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. We know where and who our help comes from. We know because of the empty cross that God will not forsake us. We know that death has been defeated. And so we cry out because we believe, because we trust God's unfailing love. Now, does that mean life is going to be easy and rosy? Of course not. But life was not exactly easy for Jesus either. Jesus prayed in the garden. Jesus cried out on the cross. Jesus wept when his friend died. And so we too can express our frustration, our anger, and our grief because God knows what that feels like. And so the psalmist continues, I am worn out from my groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. One of the greatest reminders in the psalm is that movement from despair to praise, and we see that time and time again. We can weep and yell, we can bargain and give God the silent treatment, but God is always faithful. God always hears our cries. God is always there waiting for us. God accepts our prayers, and God, our faithful God, always answers. Now, you've heard me say before that God always answers, but not always in the way that we would like. Sometimes God's yes is a resounding yes, and sometimes it's a definite no. And sometimes God knows better than we do. And so God takes that full picture and says, not right now. This is not what you need. But those answers are difficult, aren't they? We pray for healing, and sometimes we get that great miracle. We pray for healing, and sometimes we get medical wonders that work. 
We pray for healing, and sometimes we get just a little more time. We pray for healing, and sometimes we get help through mental health work. We pray for healing, and sometimes that perfect healing comes only in death. We may not like the treatment or the outcomes, but our bodies are only human after all. And so we cry out. We cry out and we pray. We cry out and we love and we live to the best of our ability. And we grieve and we celebrate. And if this virus has taught us anything, I pray that it teaches us all about hope and love and compassion and that things never go back just the way they were. One of the observations I've loved over the last week are the pictures of the earth healing itself during the shutdown. Around the world, wonders of creation are recovering. Mountains are now visible. Skies are bluer. Oceans are cleaner. And perhaps there's a lesson there for all of us. For many, anxiety is high. We're not in control of much these days. Some are stuck with family. Others are stuck in isolation. We want to do the celebrations and the visiting, the travels and the shopping trips. But maybe what we really need to do right now is to simply take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and pause. And in doing so, maybe, just maybe, we'll find some healing too. How long, O oh Lord, how long? We don't know the answer to that, but we do know that God, who has been faithful in the past, who created us in love, will never abandon or forsake us. That is the message of love on the cross. That is the message of healing, and that is the message of hope. For that, even in the midst of despair, we can sing God's praises. How long, O oh Lord, how long? The empty tomb answers that for all eternity. Amen. As we join together in prayer, each petition will end through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I invite you to respond, Amen. Let us pray for the world. Merciful Lord, you sent your Son to be our peace. Help all who suffer pain or grief find in Christ Jesus strength and peace, so that their trust in your promises may be renewed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for recovery from sickness. O God, the strength of the weak and comfort of sufferers, mercifully hear our prayers and grant to your servants the help of your power, that their sickness may be turned into health and our sorrow into joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in affliction. Almighty and everlasting God, comfort of the sad and strength of those who suffer. Let the prayers of your children rise to you. To everyone in distress, grant mercy, grant relief, grant refreshment. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who minister in healing. Almighty God, source of all human knowledge and skill, guide physicians and nurses, medical staff and mental health providers, and all those you've called to practice the arts of healing. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit, that by their ministries the health of all people may be promoted and your creation glorified. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray for first responders. Almighty God, guardian and protector, shelter all those who continue to respond to our needs and care for the sick and injured. Grant them health and safety throughout these days and every day. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the ministry of family and friends. Loving God, our Creator and Redeemer, give strength and gentleness, patience and faithfulness to family members and friends. Let their hope be in you, and by their ministry of love, let your love be made known. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who desire our prayers. Blessed Lord, we ask your loving care and protection for those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, and who desire our prayers. Take from them all fears and help them put their trust in you, that we may feel your strong arms around them. Touch them with your renewing love, that they may know wholeness in you and glorify your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all those making decisions. O Lord our God, send your Holy Spirit to guide us, that we may make our decisions with love, mercy, and reverence for your gift of life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise to you, Almighty God and Father. You sent your Son to live among us and bring us your salvation. Blessed be God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, incomparable Son of the Father. You humbled yourself to share in our humanity, and you came to heal all our illnesses. Blessed be God. Praise to you, Holy Spirit, our defender and consoler. You heal our sickness with your mighty and life-giving power. Blessed be God. Holy and blessed Trinity, sustain your servants with your presence, Drive away their sickness of body and spirit, and give them that victory of life and peace, which will enable them to serve you now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.